They lost to, lost to the Jets with Aaron Rodgers on the bench. I mean, yeah, like their whole season was like it was like oh, it's gonna be a great battle. They should they should have beat Philadelphia, but I mean, honestly, yeah. Philadelphia is a good team. I but don't the know Jets, I don't yeah, know. they they they're. they're Sliding, but yeah, um, forget the Jets. That's opening. That's opening night. So each team yeah. is like everything's in front of them. So mm. everybody plays well then, right? Because they're yeah. all trying to win. You lost to the Patriots that were like two and fourteen. It's, it's like what? Yes, and you almost lost to them again. Yes, last week. Yes. Sorry, Taylor, if that hurt your ears. It should. You're a Bills fan. <laughs> Our goal on this podcast is to know Jesus better and by the power of his spirit, do better. So together we can be a little better. Well, welcome back to A Little Better. So glad to have you. Hope you enjoyed your holidays. Uh, Thanks for letting us take a couple of weeks break. I hope our crew, Taylor, uh, even Bailey is still taking a break, but uh, I don't know. Taylor's uh, manning the fort and uh, doing such a great job, but thanks for letting um, our staff take a bit of a break. Uh, We feel refreshed, right? We are back at it. We are excited about the new year, 2024. We're excited about this new series, uh, The Ripple Effect. Uh, Drew started off with a bang. So as always, Drew, why don't you uh, recap for us? Where do we go? What was your sermon in 60? Yeah, we started a series called The Ripple Effect, and uh, it is all geared around our vision statement of saturating Rochester with the gospel. And the big kind of twist to this series is when we think about that statement, we often think about going out. But my whole message was, like, we got to get our hearts excited for the gospel if we're going to share it and live it for the world to see. And so we talked about how the gospel has grown stale to us. And some of the reasons why that is, is it's, it's, it's familiar or old news. Um, we're too distracted. And honestly, we don't view sin the way we should. And so this whole message was designed to get us to remember Jesus's sacrifice for us, how amazing that is to understand the gospel and to reignite our heart for that inexpressible joy. And the way we do that is by remembering by remembering and building a heart of gratitude and a heart of confession. Yeah. I mean, even the, even this wasn't, this feels like a January series. This feels like a start the year right yeah. kind of series. And it's kind of interesting because I'm in, you know, involved in you know, planning and developing these sermons ahead of time. By the time you get to preach them, I mean, quite honestly, it was like weeks, months sure, ago yeah. that we talked about it. So it feels very fresh. And I was surprised again. Oh, yeah, because I do love the fact that week one, I mean, it could be rah, rah, let's get out there and do it. But you just brought it home brought it inward and challenged us. Mm-hmm. I just thought um, that was incredible. Now, I full, so a little insider info, pre-preach, you went a little over uh, on time. So um, I, when I say, what did you leave on the table? You must have left stuff on the table. What, well, what, what couldn't I, you quite squeeze in? I did, I did add time. <laughs> so I told Nate <laughs> I was going to be longer than I'm supposed to be. So, yeah. um, you know, I think <clears throat> probably one of the biggest things I, I left on the table is just being able to dive in uh, practically on how um, we remember, you know, those two statements of remembering that builds gratitude and confession. Those are two things that I think we could talk about more in detail and Mm -hmm. how we get to confession and how that works in our lives. But the good news is this is why we have a podcast. So we can, we can talk about those things in more detail. And ultimately the pod, a little better is a lot of it is what was left on the table. Mm -hmm. We just shift to the podcast for us to to communicate through and work through. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we could always be leaving more, like, content, you know, new topics, but I do love the fact that we get to go practical, you know, because I do think that someone could walk away and say, wow, I'm all in, but how do I do that? So um, you talked about, you know, the ways that, I mean, here's the challenge is that the gospel to those of us who've experienced it, followed Christ for a while, can get old, yeah. can get stale. And um, and how do we fight that? I mean, you talked a little bit about that sermon, but what are some other just practical ways that you've kept it you know, fresh that we can encourage other people to keep it fresh? I think it goes back a little bit to um, some of the ways that we do get distracted or our hearts grow stale. I think the first is we, we have to see sin accurately. And that's one thing that... I, 
I, over my over my years is I have to see how sin affects me. Mm -hmm. And we often think about the consequences of sin is the worst thing, right? Like the punishment God's going to bring in my life. But I think one of the worst thing, the, one of the worst things about sin is it deters me from my purpose. Mm. It deters me from my mission, from my calling. And it make it, it like sin in my life just automatically dims the gospel in my heart. Mm. And so I think one of the ways in my life is when I do sin, I take it seriously and I got to break over it, right? Mm -hmm. I got to realize what this is doing to my heart and how it's hardening it towards the gospel. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one big way. And I also think just rem like preaching the gospel to yourself, Yeah, right? When you hear the gospel, it's, it's, it's hard to not be amazed by it. Like even mm -hmm. when I, when I preached it and, and I broke it down, like when you really do preach it to yourself, like even in the prep of this, like it challenged my heart. Like there are ways, like I have just, this has become ordinary to me. And mm -hmm. like by hearing it and understanding it, I was like, wow, yeah. thank you, Jesus. Like it just, it does build that fire in your heart. Yeah, you know, there was a, as I was reflecting, there was a verse that you didn't use in your uh, message, but came to mind as we were talking about how to make the gospel fresh. I mean, Jesus at one point said, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Mm. And I was just thinking about, you know, you talked about a bit about the dopamine rush that yeah. we get. We just have this craving oh, for new, and now it's just hypercharged with all the stimulation that we have in our lives, right? We, yep. I mean, it's smartphones and screens and streaming, you know, and the rest. There is no end of something new. Yep. But it's, but to hear, um, Jesus is talking about the old, which is obviously the gospel yeah. and his plan of redemption. That's never changed. But what's new is not new content, you know, not a new message, not going after something else, but hearing the old message in a new way. I think about Jesus when he told his parables. Yep. Every parable was a new... <coughs> Every parable is a new and surprising story about old truth, yeah. right? The truth didn't change, but it slipped past our defenses yep. because we saw something in a new way. And we see that, you know, that, you know, um, woman who's just beaten on the house of the judge, you know, to get her justice, yeah. you know, but it's just, God's always wanted us to pray, but we just see it, you know, in a new way. And I so. think that's part of our job on, on staff as a church, Brad, mm -hmm. is like one of the things that I work tirelessly over is really every year I'm teaching similar content. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm teaching the Bible. Hopefully and so, you are. Yes. I, I want to be right. <laughs> because the truths of scripture, the old truths, like if we just lived out the things we know, we'd mm -hmm. be in a much better place. Sure. Um, but our job is to make it fresh mm -hmm. from illustrations to videos. And we have an amazing team that works really hard mm -hmm. to take old truths mm -hmm. and not change them, but make them fresh in our hearts. Yeah. I mean, uh, you quoted Tim Keller. Tim Keller also talked about bringing light and heat. You yep. know, that light is the truth. Yep. But the heat is when it gets into our hearts and when we feel it and yeah. when it touches us and moves us emotionally. Um, there's so many ways to make the gospel fresh. Uh, and um, I, I was thinking about the chosen, you oh, know. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, again, just... It's a little, okay, let's just say it out here. It's a little controversial sure. to talk about the chosen because we have basically a dramatization, mm -hmm. historical fiction. It's fiction, mm -hmm. right? I doubt that Matthew was autistic, you know, <laughs> or on the spectrum, but, you know, Dallas Jenkins makes his choices, sure. but he's telling a story, but he does bring it in a fresh and a different way. And if that's driving me back to the Gospels, you know, you, right. know, you know, all the better or seeing things differently. But there are so many ways. Um, I was just reading, I don't know why I never in my life read The Hiding Place hmm. by Corey, Corey Ten Boom. Yeah. yeah, but I've been reading that. Mm -hmm. And just biographies, you know, read biographies of, you know, people of faith and just the seeing the impact of the gospel, yeah. you know, in their lives. There's so many ways, you know, to see it, you know, fresh there. Are there other ways that... Um, I mean, there's so many ways to refresh mm -hmm. your heart. I think the, the beauty of what God has done is like, you can refresh your heart 
towards the gospel in like so many ways, like just being outside in creation, Mm -hmm. right? It screams, the rocks cry out of the glory of God. And when you remind yourself of God's creation, his power, it, it leads you back to his ultimate power to rescue us from sin. And so Mm -hmm. I think just seeing the gospel in so many different things will help us. Like if we have a wide variety of reminders, it help, it will help us feel that inexpressible joy. Right. And you said about remember that a uh, remembering that drives us to gratitude. Yeah. Right. And um, I, honestly, I, I'll just confess that I've not been good about keeping like a gratitude journal, mm. right? Or even a prayer journal that really acts as a gratitude yeah. journal. Because a prayer journal that just records maybe sometimes those long term prayers that, you know, are finally finally answered. But just to remember, remember, remember my life first, well, I think we've heard it on the podcast before, is First Samuel 12, 24. Um, um, but be sure to fear the Lord and obey him with all your heart for consider what great things he has He's done, done for you. It's always a rear view mirror. It's yeah. always a remembering. You know, you know, God doesn't, you know, what he's already done would fuel an eternity of gratitude. That's right. <laughs> so I, so anyway, some of those practical ways I think are just, yep. you know, great. There was something else that you did um, in this uh, message, which was also a challenge to confess, right? Mm-hmm. And you talked about it a little bit before about the sin, but um, I tell you, I, I mean, in some ways I, I kind of dreaded the sermon <laughs> in, in, in the sense that, I mean, I'm scared. Are you scared? I mean, to to really take our sin seriously, to go through confession. It's so hard. It's I, so hard. I think it might be one of the hardest things to do in Christianity is to tell people, tell God <laughs> who you truly are, mm-hmm. right? Because there, everybody has things in their life that are secret, yeah. right? That or maybe not secret, but we tell some of it. Yeah. We don't tell all of it. Yeah. And I think the scariest thing for so many of us is to be fully known. Yeah. Because if you're fully known, it leaves you vulnerable to not be loved. Yeah. Or accepted. Yeah, but that's the paradox, right? I mean, it's the terror of every relationship. It's exactly what Tim Keller said. Like, the, the irony of Christianity is you are... Worse than you actually think you are. Right. But you are more loved and accepted right. for who you are than you ever could hope. Right. Horizontally in our relationships, that's the terror, right? You don't love me. You love who you think I am. Yeah. You, you love everything but the stuff that I've shared. And vertically with God, I mean, it's both the terror and the comfort that there are no secrets from him. Yeah. I mean... Yes, we need to confess, but it's not like we're informing God about something yeah. he doesn't already know. I think know. it's easier to confess to God than it is to others. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, God to to us is personal, but I don't have to, like, look at God yeah. and tell him, I blew it. I right. didn't do this. Right. Um, right. I think of my own marriage. Sometimes it's so dang hard to tell my wife yeah. I was a jerk. Yeah. Because my pride, I don't want to. and. Yeah, it, it, confession is just so hard. Yeah. But it's so needed. That Dietrich, Dietrich man, I can't even say his name, <laughs> Bonhoeffer's quote was, it's just like, wow. Yeah. Like, it's so true. And at that point, the, the gospel, like the truth of the gospel through confession penetrates the darkness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Light, things don't heal in the dark. They have to be brought into the light. Yeah. So I guess my question there when we say, well, it is so, it's easier in a way to confess to God and harder to confess to others than why confess to others. You started to answer that question because Bonhoeffer, you know, lays things out. But, but uh, why, you know, why should we, how can we, if someone's new, you know, said, you know, I've been a Christian a while. That's just not part of me. It's not, it's not part of what I do. Um, why should I and how should I confess to each other? I mean, the first reason why is because the Bible tells us to, right? Mm-hmm. James says we should, we, you know, we pray and we confess our sins to God and to others. Um, and so, like, it's a biblical command. Um, and how is you got to start somewhere, right? How do you do that? Well, you, 
what's hard about confession is <laughs> it's a nuanced thing, mm-hmm. right? And so who you confess to and how you confess are important things. And I think there are cer- some things that you don't necessarily, you just got to confess to God. And uh-huh. determining those things is really important. Yeah. Can we say that um, going to Instagram is probably not the way to do it, you know, or Facebook? <laughs> Usually that's <laughs> never a good idea. <laughs> but it does, I mean, we laugh about that, but I do think it highlights the fact that it does. It should be in the context of a relationship, yeah. right? And what better relationships we have than in our community groups. Yep. And um, let me see, this is January 9th, so next week. Community groups kick off. They do. So it's a perfect time. And I think that was part of the beauty of Bonhoeffer's quote, too, because he was really stressing community. community. Yeah. And, and really, the absence of community without confession. I mean, yeah. you might be getting together, but it's not community. You're still isolated yep. without confession. Yes. You know, and, and it... There's two things that happen there, right? One is genuine community mm. happens, you know, when others look at you and say, I thought I was the only one, yeah. you yeah. know, or just able to comfort one another's fellow sinners. But also, I think Bonhoeffer talks, I can't remember if it's in that quote or elsewhere in the book, because Jason was talking about it. I have not read the book, Full <laughs> Confession, we'll put in the additional um, materials, but Jason talks about the fact that it's, it's confession that makes the gospel real. Yeah. And so you are denying yourself. I am denying myself an experience God wants yep. for us by not. Confessing. Well, and I don't think you're 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 truly growing mm-hmm. when you're not being vulnerable, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't think you're experiencing biblical community if you just sit there and and don't don't express like, hey, I'm struggling as a husband. I, I need you to pray that I'm more patient or I'm, I, I'm struggling as a father. I feel apathetic towards God. Like at, at some level, you're not experiencing community until you're willing to confess struggles mm-hmm. and difficulties. And what happens when you do that is, man, there's a free, uh, like a freedom mm-hmm. when you take something that you've been holding in and let it out. Yeah. I believe that's when healing starts to begin. That's when sanctification begins to take hold in your heart where you become more like Christ because it's out there. And now I don't have to fight this struggle alone. I actually have people praying for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the beauty of it. That's where the, that's biblical community, community yes. you know, is knowing and praying and being And there even for community each other. with God, right? I mm-hmm. think your communion time with God, you're, you walk, living in his presence, it gets sweeter when you can go to God and just be like, God, I, I'm, I'm broken and here's where I'm broken. And I know you know this already, God, but I want to tell you right. because I want to draw close to you. Like when we hide things from God, even though you can't hide things from God, mm-hmm. it, it, I think it puts a barrier there mm-hmm. of like, you're not really communing with God because right. Right. you're hiding. Right. And the same with hum- humans, right? When you right. hide things from your spouse or whoever, like there's a barrier to that relationship. And until you knock that wall down, you don't, you don't experience full community. Yeah, we were talking about like, you know, communion with God, communion with other believers. But then the, I also think about just the witness, and this is where we're going to go in future weeks. Yeah. But when people outside the church or, or far from God or looking for answers walk in our door mm. and they see people confessing sin or yeah. people I my mantra is I used to think I was better than other people mm. you know I think about Paul's you know scripture you know chief of sinners, sinners. Yeah. you know but to walk into a community that doesn't think they're better than you are yep. no matter your addiction your brokenness your challenge you know, whatever you're walking in the door with you're not meeting people who look at you and say I'm better than you let me help you yeah it's I'm broken too, but we I'm, all need help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know where to, to get the yeah. answers and get it. And none of that happens without confession. That's it right. doesn't happen. It doesn't happen when people see plastic people. Yep. Right. It happens when they see authentic people who are willing to confess. And ultimately, that's that's the power of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Right. We are sinners. Mm-hmm. Right. We are all jacked up. Mm-hmm. And yet, God loves us enough mm-hmm. to not only like tell us he loves, but to give us son so that we could have reconciliation so we could be with him right. and we could look like him and we could have 
a place to go in the mm-hmm. midst of our dysfunction right. and a solution. Right. Amen. He must increase, but I must decrease. Mm. So good stuff. Well, listen, why don't you tell us, this is week one of, I don't even remember how many weeks we're going to be in the ripple effect. I think six weeks. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you give people just a little preview of where this is going? Yeah. So um, we started with ourselves and we'll begin to talk about all the ways, right, that we can saturate Rochester with the gospel. So I don't think this is necessarily going where everybody thinks it's going to be going. So I, I, I like keeping a little bit it's of... It's certainly true for week one. Yeah, Didn't go we, where I yeah, thought it was going. Exactly. So th- it, I think we're going to talk about a full picture of how we saturate. And mm-hmm. that's going to impact us in many different ways. Mm-hmm. And so that's all I'm going to give. Like, uh, hopefully it surprises you, catches you off guard. Obviously there'll be some, some areas where you're like, oh, I knew that was coming. But yeah, this is a full picture. And so... I'm excited to see how God moves in our church moving forward from this series. And obviously, open baptism. Oh, February 11th. That's right. Open it's going to be awesome. Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to do some cool things with that. So Incredible. Well, I think I'll come back. So I hope you do too. We'll see you next week for week two of The Ripple Effect.